good day, good morning. Whenever you're watching this video, I'm so glad you're here. My name is Tracy Brown. I'm a somatic nutrition therapist and a tuning specialist. And because National Eating Disorders Week is kind of creeping up on us here, and I don't want, I kind of want to get out in front of all the things that you're going to like be seeing about like, um, what's the right word? You know, definitely encouragement, which is really great. Good morning, Bev. Definitely um, awareness, but I want to talk to you about like what it takes. And so when I say recovery, I don't just mean from anorexia, bulimia, binge eating disorder. I'm really just talking about actually diet trauma and just not liking your body and feeling like you don't deserve to eat or feeling like you ha have to earn your food or feeling like, well, I will lose weight, then I'll do intuitive eating. I'm talking about all those things because all of that requires some willingness to do these couple of things. And I just want to strengthen you and encourage you for what you're getting into, but it's less about what you're leaving behind and more about what you're willing to be uncomfortable with right now, truly to have the life that is, is possible for you. So good morning, Megan, I'm glad you're here. And I'm going to be talking about uh, at the end of the week on Friday, so people need to be watching the video live to get a chance to get these. I have um, five copies of this journaling inspiration kind of book. It's called Heartfully Healed, I know it's backwards, but I have five copies of that. I'm going to give them all away on Friday to people who show up live to um, the videos. So I do hope that you kind of make some time in your morning for that. I usually show up approximately 8.30 in the morning. It might be 8.15 a.m. I might be 8.45 a.m. But it's going to be around the average 8.30 a.m. Eastern time. So if you happen to be where it's like 2 in the morning and you don't want to wake up, please let me know. Good morning, Debbie. Um, you know, please let me know. And hello, everybody who's watching live this morning. So what I want to talk about, and if you missed the beginning of the video, please go back because I'm not talking about just recovery from eating disorders. I'm also talking about all kinds of ways in which diet culture just makes us think that we're less than. And that's the work. I know it's early, <laughs> Deb, and I'm so glad you're here. So I want to talk about what we're are willing to do. So for a lot of people, it really starts with this acknowledgement that our ways of trying to be um, more acceptable, more loved, just didn't happen through trying to get a smaller body period. Even if you got there, it may have still not changed the hearts and the minds of people that you thought you needed to have to feel wholly complete. And I say all this because it's not that we we didn't realize at the time that we thought we had to be thinner to get people basically to like us and not criticize us. And it's one of those things that that might have happened maybe initially. And it may have felt like, well, that's one less thing I've got to worry about. But the whole fact that we're even saying that I've got to worry about it, something, and I'm talking to the language of food and body is your clue that like, oh, I need to get really curious about what makes me think that truly, truly, deeply, I'm going to get what I want. So there's that. Secondly, there's going to need to be a willingness to trust. Not that you have to fully like, oh, I trust you and whatever you say and it's going to work out. It's, again, what's been missing and that I've been so hungry for or that I've been eating my way through to try to get is like, true safety and connection. And even though we might be scared that we'll get hurt from trusting people, my encouragement is to like, okay, so the people that maybe I'm thinking about listening to or trusting, what evidence do I have from the way they are day after day after day after day in my, in my presence, whether it's online or in my world, show me that they're dangerous. And, you know, we do want to work on a sense of like, you do trust your, your, your innards, you know, if something doesn't feel right, even if it's all really nice and pretty on the outside, that doesn't mean you should just wholeheartedly jump in and let, let 
um, fully trust something, but I know every single person here, even though we've pushed aside a lot of our intuition and pushed aside a lot of um, trusting ourselves, there's probably still something in there saying, oh, I don't know, that sounds too good to be true. And I hope that I've presented enough here in these hundreds of videos over the years. It's like, I, I'm really transparent about the journey and that we do have to get uncomfortable being, or comfortable getting, being uncomfortable to get to something better. And so lastly, I just want to put out there that if you are feeling, I don't really know why or what I would be doing on this for, because it's hard. I'm going to be feeling comfortable feelings and maybe thinking about things or remembering things or feeling things that I don't want to feel. Or I don't want to lose um, my social cred card of like always trying to lose weight. That that gets me kind of some acceptability. Or I don't want to lose my, my thin privilege card. Um, or I'm afraid I'm going to if I fully commit. Is that we have to look at the cost. Always look at the cost. And is it actually really better holding on to some of these fleeting things? Because we're not always going to look the same. We're not always going to be in the same groups. We're not going to always be around the same people and are we willing to destroy ourselves and our clarity and our connectedness to what's good and what's real for maybe, maybe, maybe that for a second I'll get a little bit like, oh my gosh, what did you do to get that thin? Or, oh, like temporarily I can feel some numbness, whether it's from under overeating or maybe just that one last diet will work this time. And so if you don't have some other things that are important to you in your life, or there's not something maybe higher than you that you feel like that you weren't made for, just trying to constantly be smaller or exercise or eat the same foods over and over again. Or even if there's some things like, I don't even want all that. I just don't know... Um, how to go forward with simple things like maybe planning out my day to be successful recovery or um, buying new clothes or um, cooking or um, having some gentle containment in my life or doing some things that I don't know if I'm going to like. Like, I don't know if I'm going to go like the painting class. You don't have to like it. It's more about can we interrupt the patterns to see what's possible or just to learn something about what didn't work and how, how do you know that inside yourself what worked or what didn't if we don't even dip our toe in so that's my encouragement for today is just recognizing that interrupting these patterns is a giant deal no matter how tiny it, tiny it is but if you just have a couple days of doing something new and then you go back don't don't judge yourself about it but it's like oh I'm noticing that I want to run back to what's familiar that makes sense. However, is familiar necessarily good? Is that kind of comfort actually what my soul's been hungering for? If the answer is no, that you know, okay, I gotta, I gotta push forward again. If you don't have enough support for that, you know, consider my peaceful eating group. Please reach out to me personally if you're thinking that one on ones may be a better option for you. Um, let's try to figure out some options here because. I don't like to see people floundering years and years and years. And when I say floundering, it doesn't mean that people are necessarily. It just means that if you're still feeling like the comfort of what you know um, just keeps pulling you back in and you're looping, you know it's time for something different. So thank you to everybody who watched live this week. Remember, I am giving away some of these little journals. They're kind of... Um, Trying, I'll show you real quick so you can kind of see what I'm going to be giving away. But um, they're mostly just kind of art and inspiration pieces. And I think it's just a really good way of considering you get to write and journal and reflect and meditate on things exactly in the way that you need to do it. So if you're not, I'm not an artist, but these are just really beautiful to look at, to be honest. But it gives you some ideas like, oh. You know, she's really going deep, not just with the food and her relationship with food and what I feel fat means and what not wanting to eat means and what wanting to eat all the food means, but really clear, so clear. I'm going to talk a lot about this on Wednesday 
is how we talk to ourselves. We've got to capture that. If you can hear those thoughts, and we're going to talk about not being in agreement <laughs> with talking neg- negatively to yourself around food and body. We're going to talk about that on Wednesday. But on Friday, I have five of these to give away for those who come live. So, and I, I love giving away stuff. I love giving away gifts. It's really fun. Um, I like to see people encouraged and, um, and knowing what's possible. All right. So thank you all so much. Please leave your comments and questions below in, in the box you, or in the, in the chat here. You can also private message me if you're interested in um, more specifics for you personally. And I hope you have a really good day and, and um, press along this video to those who need some encouragement this morning as well about knowing there are some things that we need to be willing to do to make the be- best or the, the, the next big leap. All right. Well, thank you all so much for watching. This is helping to be an encouragement week. So if you have anything that you need some encouragement about, please let me know as well. And I will add it to these videos. Thanks so much. Bye for now.